Uh, good morning, students. I'm Dr. B. Anita Kumari, Associate Professor of School of Management Studies, Wales Institute of Science and Technology, Chennai. Uh, in today's class, we are going to discuss about the transfer of ownership and property act 1930, as well as the performance of contract act. So in this topic, we are going to discuss the following concept. Properties that cannot be transferred under the transfer of property act. Responsibility of the seller during the transfer of property under the transfer of property act. Duties of the buyer during the transfer of property under the transfer of property act. Rules regarding the transfer of property act. Performance of contract. The tender of performance must be made at the proper time and place. And we are also going to discuss some case study along with the examples. So before starting this session, uh, let's see the objectives of this Transfer of Property Act. To state the meaning of Transfer of Property Act, to know the various types of property transfer, to identify the responsibility of seller during the transfer of property under the Transfer of Property Act, to understand the duties of buyer during the transfer of property under the Transfer of Property Act, to acquire the rules related to the Transfer of Ownership Act. So students, in this Transfer of Property Act, we are going to discuss what is called property. Already uh, under the Sale of Goods Act 1930, we have seen what is called goods, what are the different types of goods, how to be handled, all the things we have discussed in the Sale of Goods Act. Okay. If you want to view the Sale of Goods Act, please view the description box. I have given a link over there. You can uh, see the Sale of Goods Act. See, in this topic, we are going to discuss how far the transfer of property is going to help. And at the time of transferring property, who are all responsible? Uh, either seller or buyer, all the things we are going to discuss in detail. So the section seven of the transfer of property acts lay down the rules, people who are uh, legally eligible to transfer of property. Every person competent to con contract and enter to transfer of property or authorized to dispose the transfer of property, not as his own incompetent to transfer such property. But the minor, as well as who is insolvent and sound mind person, they could not able to enter in a contract of transfer of property. Properties that cannot be transferred under the Transfer of Property Act. In terms of immovable property, one cannot transfer a property that can expect to inherit in future, state the Transfer of Property Act. So already we have seen under the Sale of Goods Act, the Sale of Goods Act is applicable to the uh, movable property that to cash. Cash must consider for the Sale of Goods Act. So example, here I have given an example. Ram expects that his maternal uncle who had no children of his own would bequeath his property to him and he transferred his right in the property to his son. The transaction would be held invalid. A leaser can also not transfer his right to re-entry into the leased property under the transfer of the property act. So see the first example here. The Ram expert, Ram is a person who expert is maternal uncle. That means the uh, Ram's uncle who do not have a child. So he expert that uh, his uncle will transfer the property to his name. Okay. So it is not uh, like valid one. It is an invalid one. Okay. Since he is not having some legal relationship. Okay. Next example, Ram released his plot to Mohan and put in a class in the legal lease agreement that he would have the right to re-enter if the rent is not paid for over three months. Then he alone will have the right to do so. He cannot pause on his right to re-enter to say Ganesh is associate. What do you mean by this? For example, being a owner, if I'm leaving any tenant, uh, you know, uh, if I if I am leaving my home for rental purpose for any tenant, 
the contract the transfer of ownership is held between myself and then the tenant whether he is going to pay rent or lease that is secondly it is a contract between myself and the tenant he cannot able to transfer this property this means he cannot able to transfer his uh you know the property act to the somebody else okay here also the ownership is not transferred introduction under the indian legal system properties are divided into two categories movable and immovable the Tra transfer of property act 1872 which uh, start initiated in the year of july 1st 1882 deals with the aspect of transfer of property between living beings okay what does transfer means under the transfer of property act the term transfer includes transfer through sales mortgage lease actionable claim gift or exchange the act does not cover transfer by the operation of law in form of inheritance fund uh, for feature and in for insolvency or sales through any execution of ticket so here the transfer includes only the sales mortgage lease and actionable claim or gift exchange it is not uh, uh, applicable for the insolvency types of property under the transfer of property act sales lease mortgage exchange gift and actionable claims so let's see some uh, concept here transfer of property to an unborn child under the transfer of property act so students please listen this a person who is planning to bequeath his property to more generation than one will have to keep the provision of transfer of property act in a mind while doing so this become imperative to avoid legal complication at a later stage so what they are trying to say whenever you are transferring your property from one person to another person you have to keep remember certain points which is already framed and regulated and structured in the transfer of property act in 1872 okay so we have to be clear with the terminology we could able to get a uh, help uh, then we should have we should have a proper knowledge in case if you do not have a knowledge then we can ask the, the lawyers or somebody uh, who is expert in the particular field we can have a, uh, we can get advice from them okay so we should be very clear with the transfer of property act then only we should uh, involve in a uh, in the process of transferring our property from one person to another person under the provision made in section 13 and 14 of a transfer property act the transfer of property directly in favor of unborn child is prohibited okay so usually we know the parent will be transferring their property to the children even the grand father will be transferring the property to the grandchild okay so this is possible it is valid but transferring property to the unborn child is not valid it is a prohibited one okay it is a prohibited so we will see with help of one example for this to happen the person intending to make the transfer will first have to transfer in favor of a person who is alive on the date of transfer for example uh, one grandfather is there one grandfather name is for example gopi okay uh, gopi son name is kumar gopi he would like to transfer his property to the grandchild but the grandchild is yet to born because mr kumar mr kumar is recently got married okay so in this case the gopi the grandfather he could not able to transfer his property to the unborn grandchild so instead of that he can transfer the property to his son kumar once the baby born the ownership might be transferred to the baby once he become a major okay in such a way the transfer of property can occur see the example here suppose ram transfer his property to his son mohan and thereafter to his unborn grandchild here in this example ram is a grandfather and uh, son is mohan okay so ram the grandfather he would like to transfer his property to his grand child so uh, in case he was not born before the death of ram the transfer would not be valid so usually 
whenever the grandfather wants to transfer the uh, property to the grandchild, he has to wait till the baby born. Okay, once the baby born, then only he has to write the uh, uh, transfer the property on the name of the baby. Also, nominating or uh, making as a guardian of some person till he born, he should not be able to transfer the property. That is the concept is about. Responsibility of the seller during the transfer of the property under the Transfer of Property Act to disclose. Now we are seeing the responsibility of the seller. Whenever seller wants to transfer the property, he wants to disclose the buyer any material defect in a property. For example, I am a seller. If I want to uh, sell any kind of a property to so and so person, if the particular property has any defects, or any kind of material defect or any kind of uh, issue is there, I need to communicate to the buyer or customer in a proper way. Everything should be pre-informed, okay? To provide to the buyer on his request for examination all document of the title regarding the property. As well as, as a seller, whenever I'm transferring goods to the buyer, I need to hand over all the documents, whatever related to it. Okay, as well as I need to do the proper examination, I should allow the buyer to do a proper examination. To answer to the best of his information, all relevant questions put in by the buyer with the respect to the property and the title. So whatever information I know about the particular property, being a seller, I need to communicate to the buyer. To execute a proper convenience of the property, when the buyer tends himself for execution of proper time and place, as well as when we are transferring the property to the buyer, we should ask the particular buyer about the time of registration and place and payment or is there any kind of a commission, all the things to be clarified in the initial stages, sir. Then to take as much care, as much care of uh, property and all document which are in this position as an owner of an ordinary produce students would take a sub of uh, such property between the date of contract of sales and delivery of the property as well as it is the responsibility of the seller to hold to have all the proof evidence documents whatever related to the particular property so still uh, you know until i transfer the goods to the buyer i should have all the position of the property document okay in case if the buyer have any kind of a doubt, then I should be in a position to clarify, to give the buyer position of the property. As once the buyer paid the full amount, then I need to hand over the portion of the property to the buyer. To pay all the public charges and rent occurred with the respect of the property up to date of the sales. And in case if the particular property uh, has some tax to be paid, or is there any kind of a GST or some other tax, home tax or water tax, electricity bill, anything to be paid till the movement of uh, goods from seller to the buyer, whatever taxes is levied, then it is the responsibility of the seller to settle down, to discharge all the encumbrance on the property then existing. That means if the if being a seller, I should, I should make sure that there should not be any kind of a problem or difficulties to be faced by the buyer at the time of exchanging the goods from the seller to the buyer. Duties of the buyer during transfer of property under transfer, transfer of property act to disclose to the seller any fact about the property on which buyer is aware. So here, see, in previous slide, we have discussed what are the responsibility of the seller towards the transfer of property act. Whereas in this slide, we are discussing what are the duties of the buyer during the transfer of property under the Transfer of Property Act? To disclose the seller any fact about the property of which buyer is aware. Sometimes, see, just like, for example, uh, I want to buy one land. Okay, uh, just like that, I will not buy. Even though a seller gives a lot of information, the owner of the property gives a lot of information, or any broker of the land is giving a lot of information, I will not believe everything. I will... I will collect all the information, but side by side, I I'm also will be collecting certain information about the property. I may have an inquiry with the neighbors or somebody else who knows about the site very well. 
i may ask some uh, local uh, you know local uh, advocate or local uh, some that panchayat board who will be knowing about the property very well right so once i get all the information if i am suspect with any kind of information uh, if i am aware about any kind of information about the property then i should clarify with the particular uh, seller immediately to pay the purchase money to the seller at the time on face of the compelling with the sales okay now everything is done uh, so now we in case if the transfer of ownership is going to transfer in the sense i need to pay the amount whatever is i agreed to pay to the seller and i need to follow the time and place what has been fixed for the transfer of property to bear any loss arising from the destruction injury decre uh, decrease in the value of the property not caused by the seller where the ownership of the property has passed on the to the buyer so in case if there is any kind of a loss arises because of the destruction injury or decrease in the value of the property caused by the seller so here once the ownership is transferred to the buyer then he is responsible till the ownership is transferred seller is responsible we have to be clear with two points students before the ownership is transferred if the position of the goods and ownership is with the seller in the sense he is responsible whereas the ownership is transferred the position of the goods also is transferred to the buyer in the sense whatever may be the problem whatever may be the deficiencies or whatever it is it has to be bear by the buyer only to pay all the public charges and rent which may become payable on the property the principal money is due on the encumbrance subject to the property so already we have seen this next rules regarding transfer of property see if you take a transfer of property act this is a very much important question uh, to be asked during your examination as well as uh, this topic is also coming under the sale of goods act but this is a you know some common topic which has to be uh, coming under the transfer of property act that's the reason we are keeping here so rules related to the transfer of property act there are three rules number one when the transfer of property ownership goods take place from the seller to the buyer for this purpose we have a two headings one is specific goods and ascertained goods what is what is called specific goods already we told you under the sale of goods at right specific goods in the sense when the buyer knows what kind of a goods he wants for example i told you know in the sale of goods at for example one person uh, one buyer is visiting some grocery shop and he is asking good day biscuit so in this example he is specifying he is specifying the brand of the biscuit and asking that is called specific goods if it is available the seller will be giving you ascertained goods in the sense where uh, you know sometime all the goods uh, whatever the buyer is asking the similar type of a goods will be displayed uh, sometime what will happen sometime the buyer once he, once he wants to decide to buy for particular brand of a goods for example he wants good day biscuit he paid the amount but suddenly he saw some other brand so he is a same for similar amount whatever uh, biscuit is available for example oreo biscuit is available that time he is asking the seller to give a oreo biscuit so here ascertained in the sense everything separated all the goods has been uh, all the goods have been separated as per its specification that is called ascertained unascertained in the sense where the goods has not specific i mean separated all the goods are in as a bulk there is no any kind of a specification has done so far then future goods that is also is there we we'll, let's see one by one so these are there are around six rules to be followed at the time of transferring of any kind of a property in goods keep it in remember rules of transfer of property in goods section 25 1930 this is coming under sale of goods are 19 uh 30 so again i'm telling you since the transfer of property act is a common topic so that i brought this concept under this transfer of property that's a separate heading as a separate video okay number 1 in case of sale of specific goods so in case of sale of specific goods already I told you what is called specific goods section 20 so in uh, first let us see the case study then i will explain you what is that so this is a case, this is a case study between badri prasad versus state of madhya pradesh so uh, badri prasad the merchant has selected some standing trees in a madhya pradesh in the forest department to do some transfer but before the ownership transfer the selected tree were destroyed in a fire accident in the forest 
so now tell me who will be the responsible for this so obviously the madhya pradesh the state of madhya pradesh is responsible why because the transfer of ownership is not done i hope so you can understand so in case of sale of specific goods even though the buyer or customer specifying the goods what he would like to buy he has not paid the money just he has selected just he has selected the goods whatever he wants to buy he has not given any kind of uh, this one uh, you know some advance or something he has not done anything but he has specified that i need these goods okay but before the date of delivery before the make before making a payment if anything happens to the particular goods then who is responsible the seller why because the ownership is not transferred here the ownership is is held up with the seller only rule number 2 in case of sale of ascertained goods identify and separated separately kept so here the particular uh, uh, who uh, the buyer what they have done they identified the separated the goods separately they identified the goods and kept it separately okay they have paid some advance or something else okay so now the seller is telling you have paid the goods right you have paid the amount for the goods uh, you can take it but here the buyer is requesting the seller please give me some time i will come and take but he has paid the amount the bill also has prepared in this situation what will happen if anything happens to the particular product who is responsible the buyer why because the transfer of ownership is done even though the position of the goods is held up with the seller position of the goods is held up with the seller the ownership is transferred okay see some uh, uh, i have given one case study here tarly versus baxter so tarly he the he is a purchaser uh, then the baxter baxter is a hay stock dry grass seller okay so uh, you know what is called dry grass white coal that means they used to say white coal fuel okay so what happened the tally the purchaser has separately identified and kept a case stack of case stack which need to transfer but before the delivery of a selected goods it was destroyed in a fire so what is the solution given in this case the purchaser is responsible since it is held under the ascertained goods okay ascertained goods ascertained in the sense as a buyer we they approach the seller they identified the goods what he wants to buy he separated he has paid the money okay the ownership is transferred but the position of the goods is held up with the seller seller has given clear instruction already since you have paid the money take your goods but due to the requisition of the buyer here the goods has been kept it for the seller custody if anything happens who is responsible the buyer not a seller here in case of a sale of unascertained goods not identified or not separately kept so here see this the goods are mixed up what you may unascertained the goods are mixed and not identified or not selected separately but the purchaser hence the seller is responsible if there is any kind of a damages in goods before the delivery for example uh, one uh, buyer visited my shop he has given order tomorrow there is a function at my home so okay, i need uh, or uh, there is a birthday party in my home tomorrow so i need around uh, um, just for a uh, 10 liters of cold drinks and 100 packets of biscuits like that he has given order but he has not specified any brand of the cold drink or any brand of the biscuit he just generally he has quoted the product he has not ascertained that means he has not identified or separately kept he has given order that's it the next day before delivery if anything happens to the goods who is responsible the seller not the buyer because the buyer has not identified or ascertained the goods just he has given a general information general order in this case so if anything happens to the goods who is responsible the seller where because here ownership is not transferred it is held up with the seller so you should understand whenever uh, if any kind of a case study is given Uh, to know who is responsible for the loss arises at the time of transfer of property you should read the case study twice or thrice should understand 
whether the ownership is transferred from the seller to the buyer or not in case if the ownership is also transferred then also you should identify again whether the position of the goods is with whom for what purpose the position of the goods is not transferred whether it is based on the buyer request or seller whatever it is you should understand so before reading any kind of before giving solution to the case study or before answering for any kind of a case study first try to read the case study first and relate that case study we along with our concept you should you should thorough with the concept always we should know the concept the theory is what is which is already developed once we know uh, once we have a knowledge about the theories and concept which is already developed then we should correlate these uh, theories as well as this uh, concept with a given case study we should understand which concept or which theory is associated with the particular case study once we trace it out then we should know what are the concept what is the theory what are the uh, you know points is given on that particular uh, k uh, uh, mean theory or concept whatever it is then we have to try to solve the case study this is a thing in, in such a way you have to solve the case study rules of transfer of property in goods at rule number 4 intention of the parties so intention of the parties see the example first so mayes this is a case study is between a uh, mayes versus a play by mayes the buyer versus baxter the merchant seller of a machine okay so mayes the buyer want to buy a one a machine from the seller but the seller said that the machine is not in a good condition it is under the process of repair it means that uh, he wants to buy some second hand machine okay so buyer who is a buyer the mayor mayor is a buyer he wants to buy some second hand machine so he is approaching the seller baxter okay the baxter uh, baxter uh, is saying clearly to the buyer that sir this machine is not in a good condition it has to be repaired some modifications or moderation to be done the buyer agreed it. the buyer agreed it's okay sir i like this machine uh, since my budget my budget is associated with the second hand machine only so i am agree with this so here the seller has given a clear communication and information about the particular product okay then also the buyer agreed to buy it okay he has received the money so buyer agreed to receive the machine uh, he has uh, machine and the repair of the goods before the delivery date so they have fixed up the delivery date he said okay sir i deliver the goods on so and so date i will do repair i will start to do a repair before the delivery date of the selected goods it was destroyed due to some fire accident or some mechanical error or something else during the time of repairing condition so who is responsible for this so in this situation we have to see the ownership is held up with the seller the portion of the goods is held up with the seller but the buyer agreed the ownership the buyer agreed to take up the property so in this case the court of law held that the solution is given like this the court of law held that the seller is responsible because there is an agreement between both of them but ownership is not transferred it is the seller only before the goods ownership is transferred the machine got destroyed under the process of repair of machine do you understand even though the buyer is accepted to agree or accepted or agree to get a, some second hand machine even though it carry some default or uh, some fault in the machine before it delivered to the i mean before the ownership is transferred to the buyer some fire accident something happens to the goods in the sense who is responsible the seller why because the ownership is with the seller only in case of goods delivered to your carrier the buyer is responsible if there is any damages in the goods before the delivery at the time of transaction mode because bill or receipt is already prepared on the name of the buyer for example see this so i am i am i am a seller okay i am a seller uh, one person from uh, tutupudi he is visiting my uh, shop he wants to uh, he has ordered some goods he has given a money uh, the the receipt the bill copy voucher everything is uh, ready okay the bill copy everything is ready receipt everything is ready on behalf of the uh, 
by your name then i said okay sir delivery is not possible you have to take uh, take it your own delivery then he said uh, okay sir fine then the now the goods is in transition mode i hand over the goods to the carrier person as per the request please make a note of it as per the request of the customer i am just transferring the goods to the buyer by the carrier by the intermediary before reaching the goods to the customer hand in a tutukuri the particular uh, container or some other you know the goods got destroyed due to some accident unfortunately the particular uh, vehicle which carries the goods met an accident the goods also got damaged so in this case who is responsible the seller or buyer here the seller is not responsible buyer only responsible why because the ownership is transferred to the buyer the bill and the bill copy is already created on the on the name of the buyer the buyer only requested the seller to transfer the goods even though seller has given clear communication to the buyer sir selling the goods only is our part transferring is to your own risk he has given a word here then also he has accepted the and he approached the seller to transfer the goods so in this case who is responsible the buyer not the seller good sales on sales good sales on sales or written basis so what is this sometime the sellers what they will do they will sell the product to the buyer if they if the buyer they do not accept it they will accept it they will accept the written and sell it to the another person that is called good sale on sales or written basis let's see with one example uh, with help uh, let's see with uh, one case study this is a case study uh, in between a uh, elthic and versus barries elthic versus barry so elthic seller of a horse versus barries the representative to sell horse okay so elthic the seller handed over his horse to his representative to barries for sale purpose but after some time the representative was not able to sell the horse in a given fixed period of time so what happened before he was trying to uh, hand over the horse to the seller itself before hand overing the particular horse to the seller the horse died the horse is no more now who is responsible the seller or his representative who is responsible so since this contract is created based on the goods sales on sales written basis <coughs> if the goods is not written if the goods is not sold then automatically it is the duty of the seller to return take a return back of the goods in this case the ownership is not transferred only the position of the goods is transferred to the representative of the seller you can under, able to understand right so elthic is the seller of the horse he handed over horse to one of his barrier uh, one of his uh, representative is called uh, barries okay so he has given a uh, one month of time he has given a position of the goods that means he has given a horse to the representative but not a ownership of the goods he was trying to sell the horse the representative is trying to sell a horse he could not able to complete this particular contract on before date what happened he was trying to uh, return back the horse to the seller but before the date the horse dies who is responsible not a representative he is seller why because the ownership is not uh, transferred to the representative that's all these are all the important rules to be followed at the time of delivery of any kind of a property in terms of goods so we can see the small recap so in case of sale of specific goods so in case of sale of specific goods in the sense ultimately who is responsible the seller is responsible okay because here ownership is not transferred in case of sale of asset kind goods in the sense here the buyer is responsible why because the goods are separated identified and separately kept and the amount also paid the ownership transferred if anything happens to the product buyer only responsible in case of sale of uncertain and un unascertained un goods here the goods is not identified as separated generally 
order has taken from the seller he has not paid the money so if anything happens who is responsible the seller is only responsible not a buyer intention of the party is depends is depends upon the intention of the party if the you know if the you know uh, the seller or buyer if they intentionally they enter in a contract <clears throat> but due to some uh, uh, due to some uh, situation sometime the responsibility may lies on either seller or buyer in case of goods delivered to the carrier as i told you that in case if you are selling uh, if you are handling goods to the carrier if the ownership is transferred to the buyer then buyer is responsible whereas if the ownership is not transferred to the buyer then who is responsible the buyer only the seller only is responsible good sale on sale basis in this case so it depends the seller intentionally he is selling the goods in case if the buyer is not ready to accept it he is ready to accept so it depends upon the situation also we have to handle this kind of a case study so next next deliverable state the specific or ascertained goods must be deliverable state which means the state in which the buyer cannot refuse the delivery of the goods bound to take the delivery for example polished furniture is ready for the purchase at the showroom here furniture is in a delivery deliverable state okay rules the ownership property in goods said to be transferred immediately from the seller to the buyer do you understand for example uh, i am a seller uh, okay one person is visiting my shop i am having a furniture shop one person is visiting my shop one person is visiting shop so what you can do you are allowing the person uh, you just the buyer is showing uh, see sorry the buyer is seeing all the furnitures whatever is available uh, one he has choose one furniture which is in a uh, which is in a mode of delivery that means the furniture is ready to deliver it is in a deliverable state he has paid the money in the sense immediately the ownership can be transferred that is called deliverable state this then non deliverable state what is called non deliverable state when the goods are specific or ascertained are not in a deliverable state that means when the goods is required some what to be added or it's to be in a mode to finish it then what what to be done then you can ask the, it can be considered as a agreement to sales okay example polishing of furniture is required before the delivery of goods so here goods will be deliverable state once the polishing is completed so example rules is given here the ownership and property goods is said to be transferred from the seller to the buyer once the goods are in a deliverable state a notice for the same is given by the seller to the buyer till the time is not in a deliverable state the ownership is lies with the seller only the next one is price weight measurement of the goods yet to be determined sometime if the customer or buyer is not determining the price or weight or quantity or quality of the goods in the sense the seller has to wait till the clear instructions given by the buyer once he received the clear instruction by the buyer then only he can deliver the goods so it is also called as a agreement to sale okay so here the ownership it remains with the seller where the goods are delivered on approval basis too what do you mean with this where the goods are deliverable on approval basis when buyer give his approval or acceptance to the seller does any other act of giving approval to the transaction like consumer goods resale goods third party etc when a buyer does not give his approval or acceptance to the seller but retain the goods without giving a, a notice of rejection beyond the time fixed for the return if no time is fixed so we have to see the see we have to see the customer that means we, we have to get a clear information from the customer then only we have to consider the mode of delivery so already we have seen what is called unascertained goods ascertained goods ascertained unascertained goods needs to be ascertained that means if the goods are in a general term you should get a clear information from the customer or what kind of a goods they want what is the brand name how much quantity they want likewise you have to get a clear instruction then you have to make them to pay for a product then only you the ownership will be transferred from the seller to the buyer so some of the exemptions to be given what are the exemptions that exemption is called as nemo dat quod non habit that nemo dat quod non habit means the seller should have the ownership of the goods in order to sell them to the buyer 
but there are few exemption to it which means even non owner can sell even if they don't have the ownership of the goods so what do you mean with this so usually as per the uh, sale of goods act and transfer of property act the owner of the goods the seller of the goods he has to transfer the goods but sometime he can transfer the goods by somebody else let's see who are they first one sales by estoppel already we have seen under the uh, this one uh, contract act indian contract act 1872 estoppel means if the based on some condition in case if the goods carry some condition if the customer is giving some condition or if the seller is giving some condition so based on the condition the goods has to be transferred sales by general agent sometime i am having a, a you know head office in chennai one person from trichy is giving an order i am also having a warehouse nearby trichy in the sense i can appoint one of my agent to deliver the goods from my warehouse so that is called sales by agent so in this topic we are seeing who are the parties can do the transfer of property so usually the transfer of property can be done either by the owner of the goods or seller sometime the agent of the particular seller also can done uh, can able to do the transfer of property then sales by joint owner in case if the particular business is uh, framed with help of a partnership then the particular person either the seller or some other person who is associated a business can transfer the goods sales by a person in the portion of a goods under the voidable contract in case if the if i'm having uh, i will be I, since i'm having a head office one uh, i'm having only corporate office in chennai my all goods are in varo somewhere some other place maybe uh, it is in a tanjavu somewhere in the sense i can uh, assign somebody else to transfer a goods okay next sales by seller in the portion of the goods after the sales so sometime i will be getting an order from the buyer once i get an order from the buyer i can instruct somebody else i mean my uh, merchant agent and somebody else to transfer the goods sales by buyer before the transfer of ownership sometime for example a has not sold the goods to b but only the delivery uh, delivery the goods to b that means only the portion of the goods is transferred so here this does not make a b a buyer a, a is a seller do you understand sometime the delivery of a goods can be done the delivery of the goods might have completed but the ownership is yet to complete in this case the ownership is still liable with whom with the owner only i mean it's about the seller uh, for example you can take a bailer bailey concept or some other concepts which already we have seen in the last classes so there are some exemption for this so finder of the goods already we have seen the person who is finding the goods they have to hand over to the owner of the goods okay even we have seen the partner bond concept so what is called performance of contract so performance of contract already told you and in, uh, as per the indian contract at 1872 uh, an offer is an expression of willingness made by a person to do or abstain from doing any act or omission with a view to obtaining assent of the person to whom such offer has to be made that means performance means uh, as a seller i need to specify i need to, which is my responsibility to, to ask the buyer to specify the time and place where i need to perform the contract do you understand in case if the buyer is not uh, giving any clear instruction like in which address i need to deliver the goods at what time i need to deliver the goods in the sense i can follow the general rules and regulation that business time uh, business working hours monday to friday from morning uh, 8 to 10 so like that we need to follow some rules and regulation while we are transferring goods from one person to another person so here some case study is also given so in this transfer of property act we have seen uh, the clear information about how the transfer of property to be done who is responsible if in case if there is any kind of a loss arises okay what, what are the time uh, you know what are the main responsibility of the buyer and seller at the time of uh, at the time of delivering a product and then at last we also we have seen some of the exemption case and who has to perform the transfer of property act then at what time we have to perform the contract thank you